steers. So what you're looking at here is only the stuff we need for the quick changes. There's some things that happen during this show where an actor will come off stage and have to quick and Christmas Carol. Christmas, 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 yeah, Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and and every uh, every performer wears a, uh, a wireless microphone. So when they check in at the start of the day, they pick up their microphone. Fresh batteries every day. The, Candies are so that we know when the actor has returned the microphone. There's a candy in each pocket. <laughs> they put the mic exactly. So <coughs> yeah, I didn't good know idea that for the first. Year. Yeah, they've got How, it all how many shows out. do you have this season? Uh, tw uh, ten performances of okay. this. Yeah, we had about twenty thousand people see the show last year, and we're on. We're doing well this year. Nice uh, job this morning on Channel Five. Oh, the eye opener! You yeah, saw us. seen the show? Has anybody seen this production? No. Has anybody seen A Christmas Carol? Yes. yes. Everybody probably. <laughs> so we do, um, this is our sixth year. This is the biggest production in the Northeast. Uh, there are others that are uh, a long-running production at North Shore Music Theater, uh, and then there's a long-running production at Trinity Rep that does a million performances mm -hmm. a year. But the scale of this, both in terms of cast size and sheer scale of production, um, we knew that if we were going to produce something, we had to do it on the scale of the Broadway tours that come through, which are six, eight truck shows, and so it's a big production. Where, so where did all the actors and actresses come from? From a combination New York, Boston, and right. there's a couple that are from Worcester, actually. Okay. Um, it is a, a majority of them are members of Actors' Equity, the Actors' right. Union, and then there are uh, some that are not, and there's kids. We have eight kids in the show, right. that are for some from Worcester, and then from some of the kids drive from Marblehead and from wow. South Shore. They, um, we get uh, there's a lot of a lot of people that come to the audition. It's very it's highly competitive because it's a very high profile production. And, and as I said, we get a lot of people through the door. We did a student matinee this morning for 2,000 kids. We do three of those, uh, and so we have 5,500 or so. I think school kids come see the show plus their public audiences. When do they audition for in summer? We audition in usually in early September. Yeah, you know, sometimes if we're going to go to New York for roles, we'll do that over the summer, and then we'll do a Worcester audition in the summer, in September. Yeah, and the kids, we make the kids audition every year. Some of the some of the uh, season, I can see the older cast, the season cast will invite back, right. and they don't necessarily have to audition, but the kids do because they change so much from one right. year to the next. It's crazy. They don't have kids anymore after a year. <laughs> That's right. So we do a lot. Um, it's a very big technical show. Our stage manager sits back here and uh, is in communication with uh, wireless headsets with all of the crew uh, who run the show. And there are a lot of technical bells and whistles. Right behind you is one of the biggest ones. We, uh, we fly the ghost of Jacob Marley. Anybody seen production of Peter Pan uh, has seen this same kind of flying rig. So he's wearing a harness and we hook him up to this and they will watch the production on a monitor here uh, and there's a, a three-person crew uh, two people that carry the actor's weight, uh, and one person that manages the travel. It's like a wow, that's cool. yeah. yeah, it's tricky because you know this is obviously hanging 30 feet below the track that moves back and forth. So when you move this, this follows. Uh, right. So the timing is a little tricky, and so you know, to land him perfectly in a spot, you have, it takes a lot of practice. But they, they're. Um, it's very impressive. We got some interesting flying effects this year that we just added. We redid the whole Marley sequence this year. Um, as I said, it's our sixth year, but we recreate uh, a segment of the show every year to try to add something new. Families and people come make it a tradition to come every year, so we want it to be a little different, a little new. Um, mm. Come out on stage. This is the I'm sorry. It's the best view in the theater, and only the actors did it. <laughs> oh. One guy and all these women. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're doing. Okay. Yeah, I'll even turn on the lights. Over here. <clears throat> That's the original <laughs> chandelier from 1926. <laughs> 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 Uh, the middle chandelier is the original one from the 20s. We wow. sent it uh, to Florida to be refurbished. What did this used to be? It was a vaudeville theater. It was built mm -hmm. to be what it is now when it was first built, but it was converted to a movie theater yeah, in the 40s. Yeah. Yeah. And then chopped up into cinemas right in a multiplex in yeah. the 60s. And then boarded up for 10 years. What's the seating capacity? It's 2300 now. It was 2600. Mm -hmm. 
talking about how I sit out in the audience and say, well, where were the, <laughs> where were the movie screens? Because I remember the movie screens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the um, the original back wall of the stage it was a was uh, right about here. When we uh, took the space, we knocked down the back wall and moved it out another 12 feet because Broadway crews are a lot bigger than they were 80 years ago. Uh, and so the stage had been ripped out by the National Amusements when they came in in the 60s. So the seats came all the way up to, you know, here, right where you're standing roughly. And then the screens would have sat right about here. Uh, and so uh, the reason there's so much leg room here in the orchestra is it was all re-tiered for those big reclining movie theater seats. Uh, and the, the balcony is not uncomfortable, but it's what the historic theater was. The seating was, was tighter there. Yeah, I've only sat in the upper level, so. <laughs> oh, yeah? There's a lot more leg room downstairs. Mm -hmm. Downstairs and in the loge, the front section. So it's not like Fenway, then? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, there are pieces of it that go all the way back. When they, um, like, everything from this arch, this upper arch going back, was mostly here when we got the theater. It was it had been whitewashed over and the plaster was falling, but it was mostly here. Everything from the arch this direction was completely gone. The boxes, the arches, the proscenium, the stage was all gone, and so we rebuilt it all from original drawings and photos. Yeah. I have a picture in my files of the um, hole in the ceiling. Yeah? From WBDC, <laughs> yeah. It's really crazy. The, the I don't know why was it like that. It was the back wall, right? The the back wall of the theater. You could, the, well, there was something. There was mm -hmm. something up here, I think. Unless I'm thinking of a different <laughs> shot. Well, maybe it was scaffolding. We had scaffolding all the way blue? up. Was it what? I'm was sorry. Was it painted blue? It was painted white. Oh. Hmm. It was the whole thing was was white. Um, there was scaffolding all the way up there. You could touch. Now I wish I'd written my initials in the dome somewhere because you'll never get to it again <laughs> but uh, you could reach up and touch the ceiling of course so that's the way they painted it but there was a whole three-month period when there was no back wall so you could just oh, look out and see the printer's it. building maybe that was because there's like sun streaming in maybe that was the, I think that's, yeah, what it that's probably what it was yeah. um, this production is uh, is a little bit unique we do it's, we do what we call story theater the actors move the scenery, not because we can't afford stagehands, but because it's part of the way we tell the story. And we talk about, uh, the concept of the show is that each of the performers steps into a role in the story, and so when they're using some of that great Charles Dickens language about how they're talking about the show, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll move the set as they talk about it. So you'll have one side of the set will be, uh, will be a street, and one side will be Scrooge's bedroom. And so everything in the set works like that. This piece will come around and well, turn around and become the inside of the counting house and it's become something different so everything sort of fills two roles and two reasons. You store all these really cool. store all these. <laughs> We put it all in a semi-trailer and, and park it on a lot for the rest <laughs> of the year. We just uh, props and costumes go in the basement here but uh, it's, uh, we fill, fill a semi-trailer. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, a, it's a big production, so come back and check it out. Oh, yes? You know, we do, um, we do question and answer sections with the kids after the show, and there you are always, uh, you could tell the ones that really plan ahead and questions. So, so what's it like to work on a an adaptation of a historic text. You know, the next person will come up and say, how do you remember all those lines? <laughs> you could tell which school teacher helped the class really work on the questions. Yeah. Both are good. Yeah. If, you had, uh, if you'd seen the production, I could, I could uh, tell you how, you how we do this and that and the other thing. Yeah, I wish I had some. <laughs> There's still time, right? That's right. That's what right. is that? Weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Friday, two shows Saturday and Sunday. Plus yeah. next year. Be here every year. It's, it's a, the good thing about doing a big show like this is uh, you have you can build most of it one year and then add and change and do little, yeah, hard time little is the benefits time. every year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Take a section. We take a section of the show every year and try to improve on it bring something new to this year. Quite a, few, quite a few schools going to go. 
Yeah, uh, well, it's about 5,500 kids. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think this morning we had 16 or 18 different schools, 40 buses. It's quite wow. a... It's a lot of buses. And there's three of those. <laughs> but that's, that's part of what I love about it, trying to get to those kids early. A lot of them. So, what's your background? Did you grow up in this area? Or did you no, I grew up in Colorado, actually. Oh, yeah. I, yeah.